Since Raised by Wolves first dropped on HBO Max, all of us have been asking the same question. What is soul? I have even done a whole video on it. Well, I think the answer has been staring us right in the face the entire time. Soul is the light. Literally. Hey everyone, I'm Brent the Middleman, your middle-aged middle manager from Middle America in a midlife crisis, back today with another video about the incredible HBO sci-fi series Raised by Wolves. Today I'm going to explain my theory that the myth Rake saying soul is the light may literally be true. So slap on some shades and get ready to stare straight into the sun because here we go. There are two things we've been hearing about since the beginning of the first season. Soul being the light and dark photons. I've thought for a long time that Soul and The Voice and Kepler were all related to the dark photon energy that was used to create Mother and the other necromancers, but I could never figure out exactly how it all tied together. And then the other day it finally hit me. Photons are particles of light, and according to the Mithraic, Soul is the light. Maybe this isn't just colorful language, but it is the answer to the mystery. Soul is the dark photons, and the dark photons are soul, and Finkel is Einhorn. My guess is that the core of Kepler is made up of dark photons, and that these things are even more mysterious than we have imagined. We already knew that the dark photons in Mother give her crazy abilities, like flight, being able to change her appearance, being able to get into a human's brain and make them fall asleep or have visions, and even be able to shout and make a person explode. The eyes must be made of the dark photons, because without her eyes, she loses all these powers. And perhaps my ongoing joke about the eyes being the window to the soul is actually spot on. Her eyes emit the dark photons, and the dark photons can do all these crazy things. So if the dark photons from Mother's eyes have all these powers, why couldn't the dark photons emitting from the core of Kepler do even wilder things? The voice from Season 1 could travel in the photons. The photons carry the transmission. They carried this transmission to Otho on the Mithraic Ark and told him to impregnate Tempest. And I could do a whole other video on the impending birth and what that could mean. After all, Tempest is a storm, so a big storm could be coming with this birth. The photons could have carried the voice into Marcus and into Paul and brought Tally back in some form and Mouse. It also seems like when the dark photons have been in you, that you were protected somehow. Marcus didn't die when Mother's eyes were shoved down his throat, perhaps because he had heard the voice of Soul, which means the dark photons were in him. Paul didn't die from the mouse bomb like the other guy because he had heard Soul's voice, meaning the photons were in him. One thing Marcus and Paul and Tally and Mouse all have in common is that they went partway down one of the snake holes. Paul and Marcus fell in but were saved by a branch or a rope, but maybe that was enough exposure to the dark photons from the core to allow Soul's voice into their heads. Mother and Father fell down the hole in episode one, then Mother saw the ghost of Tally lead her to a simulation pod, and this is where the dark photons impregnated her. Father and Campion were the only two other people to see Tally, and they've both been down the holes. In fact, Campion even had Mother's necromancer tears fall on him when he was born. We aren't seeing all of this in Season 2, because in the Tropical Zone, the dark photons from the core are blocked by both the electromagnetic field and this acid ocean. Maybe both were set up as defenses to protect from the dark photons. If the core of Kepler was a normal molten metal core, then mother and father would not have been able to pass through it to get to the tropical zone, but dark photons, especially conscious ones, can literally decide to let them through. Okay, so let's assume I've convinced you that dark photons from the core are carrying the voice and can manifest in technology, like the simulators from the Ark, which, by the way, were built from instructions in those same scriptures that had instructions for necromancers then what do these dark photons want? Well, if you were just a disembodied group of particles, what would you want? Soul, aka the dark photons, they want a body or an avatar. That's where the snakes come in and possibly Tempest Baby, but I'm not going to talk about that today. I believe the snakes act as avatars for Soul or the dark photons from the core. This is why the dark photons tried to make Paul destroy the chip from the lander 
so mother and father could not take the snake baby to the tropical zone where the dark photons could enter the snake. This could also be why the hooded figure tried to kill mother by pushing her down the hole, because they know if the dark photons can take on a snake form, then it can mean something really bad. The figure had been trying to warn mother about something and seemed to only be staying alive to try to prevent a snake birth from happening again. Okay, I think I know what you're thinking at this point. If the dark photons from the core wanted to get into the snake, then why did it let them pass through the core in the first place? Or why didn't it just inhabit the snake then? And these are good questions, and I'll attempt to answer the second one first. Perhaps the snake has to mature to a certain point in order to be taken over. As to why it let them pass through, probably so the snake wasn't destroyed. The dark photons knew it had a backup plan in Marcus and Paul, so it was better to be patient and let the snake live than try to get another snake to be born. After all, it appears these dark photons have been waiting for at least a million years to get this chance, so what's a few more months? This brings me to the new glowing android we saw, which we all think is going to be called Grandmother. I believe that the glow is Grandmother emitting dark photons. This is how she was able to seemingly affect Father somehow. The dark photons she generates can manipulate his system. Or, maybe Grandmother emits light photons and not dark photons. The yin to soul's yang. Raised by Wolves has set up a lot of pairs throughout the story. Atheists and the Mithraic, Mother and Father, Campion and Paul, Androids and Humans. We've also heard them mention Romulus and Remus. So many pairs. Are what we seen is a battle between good and evil? Light and dark? I know a lot of you are probably rolling your eyes and hoping that it's not this simple, and there is a good chance that I'm completely wrong, but I'm just following the clues and the breadcrumbs being laid out by the show, and this is where I'm ending up. In my last video on how the book of Genesis ties into the show, I spoke about Cain and Abel, and how the voice from season 1 seems like Cain. Grandmother could be Abel, and could have just got brought back to life. So, whether it's good versus evil, God versus Satan, Cain versus Abel, Light versus Dark, Jacob versus the Smoke Monster, for all you Lost fans, I do think it will be some extremely old battle that we've been dropped in the middle of. This would also be wonderfully ironic, since the voice told Mother in Season 1 that she cannot help humanity, that it will always destroy itself. So what if the photons on Kepler were also battling and almost got destroyed themselves? Okay. So that's enough for today. I hope at least I got you thinking and coming up with your own theories, because I love to hear about them in the comments. I really do have a fun time reading and responding to all of them. And I really want to thank everybody for all the support. Because of you guys, I was able to go over a thousand subs. And genuinely, that has me so excited to keep making videos and sharing my theories with everyone. I can't thank you guys enough. You're all awesome. All the comments are really great. And as always, if you're enjoying my videos, please like and subscribe and comment to support the channel. And I promise I'll be back with more theories after episode 5. Once again, I'm Brent the Middleman. I'll see you next time.